Hello, this is Fiona, Fiona Kennedy speaking, and this is Rosie here, who's currently only here for the sausage, as you can see. We can just see your nose, can't we, Rosie? Anyway, Rosie would like to do a presentation with me today about adversity, childhood adversity, and how that leads to all kinds of adult problems. And the context today is going to be um, the work we do in India. So we do this work, we started doing this work by accident really. We met some people on a bus in Mumbai who said they had a charity which was called Dream a Dream, which is based out of Bangalore. And that charity doesn't itself rescue kids, but it helps kids that have been rescued who might be living in residential schools or orphanages by enriching their lives. started off with sports and now it does sports, uh, theatre, music, um, improvisation, English, work readiness programmes, all kinds of different things. And what's important really is the way it does it. And it does it with a combination of arts using its learning from an American organisation called Pi Glo Global, which is PYE, and also the contributions that we've made as clinical psychologists, we being my husband, Dr. David Pearson, and myself, Fiona Kennedy. So when we arrived with Dream a Dream 13 years ago to volunteer, we found that the mentoring program they had which matches uh, volunteers from India, so these would be software engineers, mostly from Dell, Oracle, IBM, Bangalore-based software companies, and they match them with the uh, rescued kids from the streets and children who come from adversity. And they act as guides and mentors to help those young people cross castes, cross classes, have opportunities which they never had before, and more important, have an attachment figure. So what was happening at the time was that that program was set up, but after pairing, the relationship between the young person and the mentor kept breaking down. Because I think of a lack of understanding on each side. So Dave and I created a 21-hour, seven-day, so three hours a week, training program for mentors and each of the three hour sessions is split into two halves. The first half is about the effects on human beings of neglect and abuse, serious neglect and abuse such as occurs in India. So in India of the 460 million children there, between 50 and 60 percent of them are stunted or wasted in their growth. And we'll discuss that a bit more later. Um, but that stunting and wasting also applies to the brain and uh, causes a whole set of problems. So these problems include concentration difficulties, attention span difficulties, restlessness that looks like ADHD, um, relationship problems, emotional regulation problems, inappropriate emotions, so maybe laughing when you should be crying, um, um, cognitive regulation problems, so as I've told you, the, the concentration issues and flitting from one topic to another, uh, behaviour regulation, so impulsive behaviours, and um, this kind of begins to sound like what we call EUPD, Emotionally Unstable Personality Disorder or Borderline Personality Disorder. But like many people, we prefer to stay away from labels and even away from pathologizing things altogether because we're interested in how we can take young people from adversity and all of its negative effects towards thriving and living a positive, meaningful uh, life. So the first half of our teaching is about the effects on development of adversity and the second half is a set of skills from DBT, Dialectical Behaviour Therapy, from ACT, Acceptance Commitment Therapy, from CBT, from Compassion Focused Therapy. And these are a subset of skills which we find that we can teach successfully to people with no mental health background at all. 
and this is sufficient along with our support and um, supervision to allow those uh, relatively young professionals to make meaningful attachments with the young adults, for, uh, young adolescents and children from adversity. So this program is called the Mentoring Program. You can find more about it at um, www.dreamadream.org. And the way that this process works is that if you think about a baby being born, once a baby is, well, even before the baby's born, adversity can have effects. It can be high stress hormone levels in the womb. It can be lack of nutrition, not allowing the correct building blocks for human development in the womb. It can be abuse towards the mother while the child is in the womb. It could even be um, abnormal levels of testosterone or, um, or the child's sensitivity to testosterone. So many things can cause um, difficulties with development in the womb. And after that, the interaction between the child and parent or the child and its environment is very important. So if mum is not present, which is the case with abandoned children, obviously uh, that's going to cause massive, massive challenge to a child. Because the central thing that a child needs to develop is love, is attachment. The experiments with the young people in Romanian orphanages showed that even if uh, one feeds children, so in the Romanian orphanages the children were in, in beds, in rows, but they were not touched or loved. And even though they had adequate nutrition, they didn't grow. So it might be that the young person has inadequate nutrition and it's also frequently the case that they suffer from neglect and abuse. And these two um, not good enough elements of the environment, if you like, combine together to interact with what are called sensitive periods or critical periods of development. During these critical periods, the brain and body is pre-programmed to develop very fast in a particular area. So, for example, language tends to rocket ahead at around the age of three. Um, so, a young person who doesn't get spoken to or interacted with around the age of three is going to have difficulty acquiring language. And even if they then get into a good enough environment, say at four or five, at four or five there are other significant um, developmental tasks that have to happen. So the child's going to be trying to do the four or five-year-old tasks as well as catch up on the three-year-old tasks that got missed. And by that time, of course, the brain will have moved on from brain pre-programmed to quickly acquire the three-year-old tasks. So this complex picture leads to um, what's often labelled as failure to thrive or uneven development or incomplete development in the literature. And the neurological studies will show that um, hippocampal volume, etc. and various other brain areas will be less developed in these young people. So this interaction between neurology and environment continues until we get young adults with the list of problems that I discussed earlier. Now it is the case often in India that people say, oh but surely these young people are so resilient they've overcome so many problems. And there is some literature which shows that some degree of adversity can make you stronger. But this literature tends to be focused on much milder levels of adversity. Um, so perhaps a loss of one person or um, a blow during normal development. But what, what we're talking about here is um, serious adversity. And this is not just confined to India. We can find these levels of adversity in the UK, in Europe, in America, although it's often hidden because obviously if a health visitor discovered that a child was not meeting its normal growth, growth chart patterns, uh, there would be action taken. But there are children, even in our societies, who aren't known to the authorities, who move around a lot, who are never uh, registered with birth certificates, etc. So uh, we do find this in our society too, and we find it especially among the group of people who fill our um, 
psychiatric hospitals or prisons um, or social services um, because of the damage that trauma and abuse and neglect has done to them. So the good news is that the mentors who we first of all trained and now Dreamy Dream trains themselves are successfully able to stay in a really good attachment with these young people. Some of the young people we knew 13 years ago when they were 13, well obviously most of them, are now 26. And one of those young people is running the mentoring program for Dream a Dream. So Dream a Dream have, and other organisations too, but I think Dream a Dream is unique as far as we know in India in terms of providing this particular um, relatively intensive training to its mentors. And we're finding that young people are able to thrive. Not all of them, of course, and we're really focusing on the ones that get left behind to make sure they don't get left behind and they get more intensive interventions. So um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed listening about this. We have produced a manual, um, which is called the Dream Mentoring Manual. That is free. If you would like a copy, contact me, uh, Dr. Fiona Kennedy, at greenwoodmentors.com. Have a look on our website, www.greenwoodmentors.com. Come to some of our events and hear more about this, uh, especially as it applies to um, our UK, European and American clients as well. We'll send you the manual free. You're welcome to use it. There's also a Train the Trainers manual if you're interested in that. Um, and send me your thoughts on this material. Comment on YouTube or join me on Facebook. So hoping to hear your reactions to this. It's been lovely to talk to you again today and thank you very much. Bye bye.